I love football and I always want to be in football. And when I knew I couldn't become a top player, <laughs> then I wanted to stay in the game and coaching was it for me. Hi, I'm Gavin and I'm a football coach. My dad was a coach himself, so I used to follow him around and I used to help him out with cones, dips, markers. I think at some point I realized that this is something I enjoy. After A-levels and I decided like, look, I, I needed to get a degree anyway. So let's get a degree that can support my coaching and that was sports science. So I went to NTU for four years and during that time I furthered my coaching badges and stuff like that. I think that was kind of the moment where I knew that coaching is the pathway that I want to go down. Further down the line, when people have connected me with coaching and then they, they kind of accepted it and, and I'm trying to make a good career out of it. So I've got, I've got less question marks now when I say I'm a coach than, than when I first started. I used to play football since I was very little. My dad was a coach, so he took me under his sessions and he was quite tough on me. And training under him, it was a little bit um, scary. And that kind of taught me discipline, responsibility, timekeeping, those kind of values. And, and those are very important values. And now looking back, he was definitely a role model in the sense coaching wasn't paid well. Well, it's still not paid well now, don't get me wrong. But having seen him going sessions to sessions and putting food on the table, and, and that really is an inspiration for me. Me and my dad, yeah, we speak about football, but we don't really speak about coaching, funny enough, because we view quite a few things a little bit differently. So we, we kind of know that we avoid conflict <laughs> by, by not addressing it too much. But we do speak about football, we do speak about the, the team, we do speak about performance. But knowing that he's always there to, to support, that's the most important thing. My day typically starts at 6, I'll wake up and, and I'll get a workout in just to release some of the stress, get some dopamine in my head. And then I'll be in the office by 8.30 and then that's where the planning starts. Uh, first of all, we'll probably be planning for the upcoming session and then we'll review the session from before and then, you know, we have lunch as a technical team and then come back, plan a little bit more and then by 2 plus 3 o'clock, I'll be setting the, the pitch up. I think at 4.30, 4.45, we have team meeting with the, with the players and then we're on the pitch and then the day will probably wrap up around 7. It's not a typical work week if you like. Our week is periodized based on, on the games. Public holidays or not, it's irrelevant in that sense. So we're just purely based on the game schedules and we work from there. And so sometimes we have a game on a weekday or a Monday, then we might train over the weekend. This season, I think we played four rounds. So we had 28 league games, two AFC Cup games, and now we are in our fourth Cup game. So that, that stretches throughout the year. At least in our line, people often think that it's a, like a two-hour job. You come for training and then you leave after training, but there's a lot that goes behind the scenes before training and after training, um, during rest days. There's no real off days. So even though it's an off day, my brain is still reflecting on things that happen or reflecting for things to happen. And you can ask my wife, right? I don't think she had an off day with me yet where I'm completely with her in the moment. That's something I need to work on, but that wouldn't be possible without her understanding, so. Winning the Singapore Cup in 2019 and then the Community Shield in 2020, those are nice moments and those are easy to remember moments. Uh, but I think the highlight would definitely be participating in the Champions League last year. That was really, really cool. And that was kind of one of the goals that I have as a coach. And I definitely do want to get, the, get back to the Champions League stages again. In terms of uh, the lows, right, I think the same low came from the uh, Champions League. Uh, that was a very low point because we got Hammond in the Champions League, big score lines, everybody was on us, media was on us. So the pressure was huge, but we were trying our best. And then uh, we were away from family for 40, 50 days and we were stuck in quarantine for two weeks. So those were difficult times, but I have a job and, and I'm responsible for, for the team, for the club. And, and I knew that each day I had to be the strongest, if you like, out there. I uh, tried to show as much calm to the team and, you know, for the place, for the club, for the staff, um, I had to do it. If I were not a football coach, I really do not know what else I would do. I love football and I always want to be in football. And when I knew I couldn't become a top player, <laughs> then 
I wanted to stay in the game and coaching was it for me because I really enjoy working with, with players, trying to help them, trying to help develop the team. And when I see the players enjoy doing what they do, that gives me a lot of joy. They walk off training, they walk off the game, satisfied with what they've done on the pitch, that, that, that gives me a lot of satisfaction as well. But at the same time, when our players play for the national team, when they go on to play at bigger stages, that gives me a lot of satisfaction as well. I'm fortunate enough to work with some very, very talented youth players like Felix Godard at Blackburn and Dennis Parkinson who went on to Porto and now is playing for another club in Portugal. But I think recently got called up to Japan. I worked briefly with Ben Davies. So I'm fortunate enough to work with quite a few good players and I'll just leave it to that. <laughs>